Contingency tables are a way to sort data from a study so that we can more easily answer some of the complicated probability questions. For example, we're looking at a study of speeding violation and drivers who use their cell phones. We can see that there are some drivers who use their cell phones and did get a speeding violation last year. But there's also some drivers who use their cell phone and did not get a speeding violation. We have drivers who don't use their cell phone but still get speeding violations. And we have drivers that don't use their cell phone while driving and they did not get a speeding violation last year. We have the totals for each row, so all the drivers who use their cell phone while driving. We also have the total for all the drivers who don't use their cell phone while driving. The total for all the people who got speeding violations last year and the total for all the drivers who did not get a speeding violation last year. If we want to know how many people are in the study total, we can add any of the two disjoint groups. So either you do use your phone while driving or you do not. So we could add the two totals for drivers who use their cell phone, drivers who do not, we will get 755. Or we could use the other two categories that are separate, speeding violations last year or no speeding violations. Adding the 70 and the 685, we get 755 as well. So we know how many people are in the study total. We know how many drivers use their cell phone while driving, how many drivers don't use their cell phone, how many drivers did get a speeding violation last year, and how many did not. We can also see the groups in more detail, which is what makes the contingency tables so useful for answering some of these more specific questions. So let's get started. If I want to find a probability that a driver is a cell phone user, I just need to know how many cell phone users are there. So I look in the row that describes any driver who uses their phone while driving. I can see there's a total of 305. Now this question isn't asking us about whether or not those drivers got a violation or not. So I can use all the drivers from that row and I will put the total people in the study as my denominator. So the probability that a driver is a phone user is 305 out of 755. If instead I wanted to find the probability that the driver had no violation in the last year, I would look at the column that talks about drivers with no violation in the last year. I can see in that column there's a total of 685 members of the study out of the 755. Now here's where it starts to get more useful. Find the probability that the driver had no violation in the last year and was a cell phone user. We're looking at a row and a column and we're saying and. So we want a driver that has both characteristics. We won't include the 25 drivers who use their phone but didn't get a speeding violation. And we won't include the 405 drivers who did get a speeding, sorry, no speeding violation, but they don't use their cell phone. We're looking at only these 280 drivers, the ones who use their phone as well as did not get a speeding violation last year. So that's 280 out of 755. What about the probability that the driver is a cell phone user or they had no violation in the last year? Now we're looking actually at the exact same row and column as the last problem, but this time we're saying or. So we will include the 25 drivers who use their phone but didn't get a speeding violation. We will also use the 280 that fit both characteristics, as well as the 405 drivers who don't use their phone and did not get a speeding violation. We can add all three numbers here. Out of the total 755 members in the study, that results in 710 over 755. If we want to find the probability that the driver is a cell phone user given the driver had a violation, then we're going to look in the first column to describe the drivers who did have a speeding violation. 
because we know they definitely had a driver uh, violation. So given they are somebody who got a speeding violation last year, that means we're going to reduce our sample space. We will ignore the rest of the table. We're only going to consider what's inside of the green rectangle here. So only consider those who did have a speeding violation in the last year because our conditional probability says that's what we're looking for. So instead of our denominator being 755, it'll just be the 70 drivers who definitely did get a speeding violation last year. Now from here, we can ask of those 70 drivers, how many of them are cell phone users? And we can see that there are 25 drivers who use their cell phone in this first column. So 25 out of 70. The sample space has been reduced because we had additional information that we knew we were considering a driver who did have a violation last year. Let's try another conditional probability. Find the probability that the driver had no violation last year given the driver was not a cell phone user. For this question, we're going to need to look at the row for all those drivers who do not use their cell phone as well as the column for all the drivers who did not get a speeding violation in the last year. And we're looking at a conditional probability here. The given information is that the driver was not a cell phone user, which means we will not consider anything outside of the blue rectangle. We're only considering the study participants inside of the blue rectangle our new total is 450. And of the drivers who are not cell phone users, there's 405 who had no violation last year. So the probability of finding a driver with no violation last year, given the driver was not a cell phone user, is 405 over 450. With conditional probabilities, these contingency tables are very helpful because they can help us reduce the sample space to just the, the group in the study that fits the given information. So again, we have shrunk the sample size. We're not looking at all 755 participants because we know for a fact we're talking about a driver who is not a cell phone user. That's the given information.